You've been invited to your Auntie Goldie's for Sunday dinner and you know the spread will include a jello mold with a side of sweet potatoes covered in marshmallows and some mayonnaise potato salad. What is an undiet rock star to do? Today on Megan TV, I'm answering your question how to eat well when you're the dinner guest. Today is the day. Let's make this happen. The question I'm answering today comes from Jeanette in Oakland, California, and Jeanette writes, Dear Megan, I recently picked up your book Undiet and I have devoured it, not literally, but for sure all the information and recipes. It has changed the way my family and I eat. Thank you. No, Jeanette. Thank you. The challenge I am having is that we still want to be social. We are often invited out to friends and family for dinner and I don't know what to do. I don't want to stop spending time with our loved ones, but I find myself resisting invitations as I don't want to revert back to he eating heavily processed food. How can I handle this? This is a great question and one that I have been asked many times and often deal with myself. The first and very important thing to remember is that you should never feel like you need to eat something you don't want to just to make other people feel better. You got that? This doesn't serve anyone, plus you will continue to deal with the same issues every time you show up at that person's home for dinner. The other thing to remember is that you also can't expect someone else to completely change the way they eat or live simply because you have. There are three ways that I like to handle this situation and they can all work really well together. The first, be clear from the start. When you receive the invitation, accept it graciously and let whomever the host is know how excited you are to see them and spend time together. This is, after all, why we get together in the first place. It is also your responsibility to let them know that you are avoiding certain foods or eating a certain way right now in an effort to resolve some health issues. Make it clear that your health issues or desired way of eating isn't their problem to deal with. One of the scripts I like to use in this situation is this. I've changed up my eating habits a bit to help with some health issues. It's going great so far and I'm starting to notice improvements, but sometimes it can make eating out a little tricky. Do you mind if I bring something along that works with my eating habits and that I can share with everyone? And then you bring something that can serve as your whole meal if need be and of course enough for everyone else. The less attention you draw to this issue, the better. Number two, don't be a judgmental Judy. This can be tough. You feel proud of how far you've come and might even be at a point where you are genuinely grossed out by mayonnaise potato salad, a turkey made out of soy, or bacon flavored ice cream. Making other people feel bad about their food choices doesn't help your cause. You don't want to be the killjoy, so keep those looks and words to yourself and work on being compassionate about where others may be at in their own health journey. Only offer info when you're asked. Three, be consistent. I know how tough the transition is. Unless you were born eating and living this way, most people rocking the undiet life are not lifers yet. What gets challenging when eating with others is if one day you're all, I don't eat gluten and dairy, and the next time you pig out on pizza with them, and then you're back to your only organic, non-GMO, free-run, sunshine-fueled meat or veggies. If you want to be taken seriously, you need to be consistent and truly lead by example. Integrating your newfound healthy habits with the same people you love to bits who are still proudly riding the Chinese takeout train or kicking the midnight poutine party takes practice and patience. Just as you don't want to be pressured into reverting to your old habits, they may not want to be pressured into changing theirs. Use this as an opportunity to do your very best and lead by your own consistent example. As Jane Austen dropped it, it's not what we say or think that defines us, but what we do. As your health starts to improve, there's a good chance those around you will start to take on a few healthy habits of their own. And if they don't, well, that is their journey. It's up to you to make the most out of yours. Have you had a tough time adjusting your new way of eating and living with old friends and family? Share your story with me in the comments section below. I want to hear from you. There's loads more vibrant living inspiration at megantelpner.com and you can connect with me on Twitter at megantelpner. Vibrant health starts with one little choice and every choice counts. Today is the day to make that happen. Thanks for joining, have a great day.